Hi, let's take a quick look at uh, a few uh, tips and tricks uh, with uh, Jupyter. Okay. So if you don't have Jupyter installed, you can actually run it on the web, not just here, but in uh, Google, in Azure, and many other places. So assuming that you have already installed Jupyter, let's see how to use it. First of all, uh, what is it, right? A Jupyter Notebook is an interactive document that contains code as well as a few other things that go along with it, like the output of the code, some text that you can explain, uh, illustrations, your plots that you created, some images to explain. So it becomes one self-contained document that includes code as well and is saved using an IPYNB, IPYNB or IPython notebook extension. Behind the, under the hood, it's actually just a text file and stored in a JSON structure. And here is an interesting fact. Even though these look like uh, slides, these are actually, uh, this is actually a Jupyter notebook in itself. Okay. So for uh, this initial uh, beginning uh, tips and tricks, I thought I'll just cover a few things uh, with uh, editing tips, something that are cell related, how to get help, and then some few basic things that you can do with Jupyter and uh, notebook related tips. Okay, these are all the things that I hope to cover. Here are some editing related tips. The very first thing we should keep in mind is that in a notebook, you can be in one of two modes. You can be in what is called an edit mode or a command mode. In an edit mode, as the name suggests, you can actually write something in a cell. You can write code, you can write your text, anything you want. When it happens, that cell has a green border and a pen icon appears. So you basically click on a cell and you get into an edit mode and you start typing. Uh, in contrast, in a command mode, you can operate on the cell itself and I'll show you, but you know that you're on a command mode because of a blue border and there'll be no pencil icon. So let's first take a look at what we mean by these two. I have a companion notebook here. And so there are some cells, each one of these uh, rectangular blocks is one cell. That's how Jupyter works. If you click, you will notice that this cell border turned green and now I can type anything I like. Okay, I can change it. When I'm in a edit mode on the top right, you will see that there is a pencil icon here. Okay, it says it's edit mode. To go from an edit mode, the other mode is to go to a command mode. So if I hit escape, the escape key works both in Mac and in Windows PCs, uh, it'll, the cell turns blue. That means that now I can actually operate on the cell. I could move it down or I can even delete it. For example, here it's in green, escape, it's become blue. So now if I, I can I can delete it if I wanted to. Okay, and we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so those are just the two modes. How can you tell which mode you're in? Like we said, right? You know that the cell border has to be green, look for the color and look for the pencil. How do you know, how do you switch from one to the other? Basically you hit an escape and that will take you from edit to command and then you double click or a single click and then you come into the cell and you can start typing, that's all. Cell related tips. There are again, two types of cells that are uh, of relevance to us for uh, to get started. A code cell is where we would write our code. A markdown cell is where we would write human readable text, okay? So a markdown cell is uh, technically called, uh, it has contains what is called rich text. So you can add images, you can format it using bold or it links. Uh, you can add links, you can add images, HTML elements, you can even write a mathematical equation and you can add symbols, Greek symbols, all of that is possible in a markdown cell. And a code cell, uh, for our purposes, it will be Python. Very commonly, uh, uh, Jupyter is used for Python, but it, it needs what is called a kernel, which is where the Python commands are run. You can have different kernels for different languages. The name Jupyter stands for, for example, Julia, Python, and R. So you can have many, num many uh, languages running on a kernel, okay. So first, now let's look at how to add a new cell above or below the current cell. This is actually a useful tip. So let's say that I'm here and I wanted to add a cell above. You can of course go here and if you just click the plus, it'll add one cell down. But again, if I go there and then you hit escape, notice that I go into the blue mode and A for above and then come back here again, escape B for below. So that way you can keep adding uh, cells above and below. And how to delete a cell? So to delete a cell, uh, let's go here. 
and let's say I'm going to delete all these blank cells. You again escape to go into blue mode and then an X. So just like and an X. You can if for those of you who use VI, you remember DD to delete will also delete that cell. Okay, so be careful because it's a little difficult to bring it back if you delete cells. But if you don't want a cell, you can simply type DD or escape X and it is gone. How to copy and paste a cell? So let's go back here and let's say I want to create a copy of this cell. So first I go into escape mode, it becomes blue. C, escape C for copy and then just a V will place that cell below the current cell. Okay, and then I can even move it down to other places if you like. Let's try a mini exercise now. You can try it yourself if you want to pause the video, but in an empty cell, uh, can you type print hello world? And uh, if you are running Python 2, which you should not be, uh, because most people have moved over to Python 3, you can actually type print hello world without the parenthesis and run this cell. So now, if you've tried it, I'm going to do it here. So first, as I said, escape B for giving myself an empty cell. And then you can type print uh, within quotes, hello world. And then to run it, there is of course a run button here. You could do that or you would do a shift and it run N, and then it prints it. Okay. So that's, that's the exercise there. So hopefully you were able to do that and then now make a copy of that cell. So if I want to make a copy of this cell, so I go back there, see it's selected in green, hit escape, it becomes blue. I'm in command mode, C for copy and V for make a copy of that cell. So control and paste. So I made a copy of the cell. Next, let's look at a couple of keyboard shortcuts to run or execute a cell. <clears throat> when we execute a cell, what we mean by that is that we have a, we could have one or more lines of code. We want to give that code to the kernel. It will process it. Maybe get an output and then that output, will, if there is an output, will be displayed below the cell. <clears throat> this is what is meant by running or executing a cell. The keyboard shortcut, uh, pay attention because you will be using this a lot, is shift enter. When you do shift enter, it runs, gets the result, and then the focus or the cursor comes to the next cell. On the other hand, if you use control enter, it will run, but the cursor will continue staying in the same cell. Let's uh, take a look at both. This is my companion notebook. I have cleared it up so that I, you can see the effect of uh, what happens when we run. So first I'm going to do shift enter. Pay attention here. There is a blank space here with the input. So it runs and then it became line number one. Okay, so that is the first command that we have run. Next, I could also run the next cell. You saw automatically that the cursor came down to the next cell. If I do shift enter, it runs and gets me a new number. I can always go back and run it one more time. So now the numbers keep getting incremented. So it's number three and so on. But I could also do control enter. If I do that, you will see that the number increases. I get the output, but my focus continues staying on the same cell. So I could do this a few times by staying, staying, staying in the same cell. Jupyter, like many other IDEs, has this very useful feature of auto-completion. So basically you will start typing something and then you hit tab and Jupyter will helpfully make suggestions for things that are reasonable to fill at the time. Let's take an actual example here. In this cell, I have two uh, variables, threshold value and threshold option. And now in a new cell, if I just start typing the beginning of this THR, if I hit a tab, it gives me two options. I can scroll down to whichever I want and then I can just select that. So I don't have to type it and it also avoids costly spelling mistakes and then uh, you can save a lot of time debugging if you just follow. So just a useful feature to keep in mind. Now let's look at another very useful cell related feature. If you have a very long output, how do you hide or minimize it? Uh, let's look at an example. So let's say that I created a new cell and I typed something. I say that for X in range 100, print X. Now if, if I run this using shift enter, I see that there is a very, very long output, which I may not want to see all of, because then only I get the rest of the notebook. So one way to sort of avoid or minimize this is to move your cursor to the left. Do you see the gray color? And then if you click it once, there is sort of an inset region of fixed width given. So you can see the rest of the notebook 
but the output is still there. Even more usefully, if you double click, um, Jupyter will fold this for you. This is called the accordion feature. So you can double click to fold and double click to open it. So it's very useful. If you want, you can look at the output, but if you didn't want, if you want to move on to the next cell, you simply can close it and then run your next. Jupyter actually comes with excellent help. We just have to know where to look. First of all, under the helpfully labeled help tab, there's a user interface tour that you should definitely take. So let me go to an actual notebook here, and you see under this help, the very first link here is a quick tour of the notebook interface, also the keyboard shortcuts. Many of the ones that I'm not covering are covered here, so please do take a look. A couple of other ways to also get help in Jupyter. You can use, like in many other languages, a question mark. So if you type question mark in the name of a function, a Python function in this case, because we are running the Python kernel, it will tell us the doc string. It will tell us that print is a function. It takes these following sort of parameters. And here are the optional keyword arguments that you can give. So it gives you the entire one. So that is question mark. Or sometimes even easier than that is to type help print. And then if you run that, you get the same thing. You get a help. You, you can read up quickly and very succinctly. So something to keep in mind if you need some help on the functions that you're using. A few more Jupyter related tips. First of all, from any notebook, how do you get back to what is called the Jupyter Home? Okay, Jupyter Home has the official name. It's called the Notebooks Dashboard, which is where a list of all your notebooks that are present and whether they're running or not is shown. I'll show that to you in a second. Maybe we actually go to the companion notebook here, and you know this is the this is your notebook that you're using. So if you go here to the logo, it says here you see the tooltip says Dashboard. You just have to click on it and it will take you to your main sort of home page where you would have kept all your uh, notebooks and you can see which ones are running and then you can come back to the ones that one that you were at next how can we tell if a notebook is busy by by that i mean that uh, the kernel is actually still in the process of executing the code that you have given it it's not done yet how do you tell that uh, there is a very convenient way that uh, Jupyter will signal to you that it's still processing something, and that is to look for this asterisk symbol uh, instead of a number. When it's done, this will switch to a number. It will switch to the next incremental number, but if it's a star, that means that it is still not done yet, as it's shown here. I will demo that as well. Since uh, I'm using a notebook for even these slides, I could show it to you right here, I suppose. So I'm just saying, hey, sleep for one second. So please watch this number, watch what happens here. I run it, it will be a star, and when it's done, it switches to the next one. And then I do that again, and then it will go to the next one. Okay. When a notebook is busy, you will in fact see that a kernel busy symbol in the notebook. Let's see if I can maybe try to show you. Right here, next to where it says it's Python 3, there is a white circle or a hollow circle here, which means that the kernel is idle. But let me say right here, conveniently, I have a cell. So let's say I make it sleep for five seconds, if you watch here, it says kernel busy, and then it will switch after five seconds, it will become idle again, there. So that's how we know whether a notebook is busy or not. To finish this tutorial, a couple of notebook related tips. The most important one perhaps is how to save a notebook, okay? Very quickly, you just have to type control S, command S if you're in a Mac. So get into the habit like anywhere else to save frequently. Of course, the good news here is that uh, Jupyter actually comes with an auto-save uh, feature. So by default, every two minutes or so, they will make an auto-save backup, but it is better to be explicit about this. And another one, I'll show you how to make, how to clone a notebook, okay? So let's say that you've downloaded a notebook from the web or somebody has given a notebook to you, you want to run it, and you may also want to make start making changes, but you may not want to corrupt or change the original notebook. So there's a very nice way of making a copy of a notebook. So do not do save as. Save as will simply rename the existing notebook. But if you go to the file tab here, then you can click on make a copy. So it will give you a completely new copy. You can call it whatever you like. It will show you, you just rename it here. You can give it a new name and then you are done. So those were a few uh, beginner Jupyter tips that I wanted to share with you. Thank you for your time.